It's Freestyle Friday! Coming in hot with quick shots of inspiration on a variety of topics. Today we are talking about the power of... Words. This is going to be a fun one. I recently did a poll on Instagram and asked what you wanted to hear. We got like a lot of submissions. We just read through a bunch of them. And one of them said the power of words. And I love that because I think we don't realize how powerful our words are and how powerful our language is. And let's take a few minutes and dive into that a little bit more. Yeah. I think think about, you know, how you talk to yourself matters, right? Like, what do you say about yourself? Do you say like, oh, you know, I'm lazy or I'm not the type of person who works out or eats healthy or... I could never do that. I couldn't do that. There's no way. I, no, I couldn't yeah, do that. Yeah, I'm not that smart. I've never done anything that impressive. I didn't go to college. Like, Yeah, I'm not going to ever make that much money. What do, you, what, what do you say to yourself? Because, you know, one of... <laughs> that reminds me, one of our friends, Kelly Juni, she said she used to say these things to herself and then she started understanding the power of words. She started affirming herself. She started to understand what she wanted, who she wanted to be, the life she wanted. She's like, now when my husband gets in fights with me, I'm like, how could you fight me? I'm amazing. And imagine feeling that. Yeah, I'm a badass. I'm amazing. How could you fight this? Imagine feeling and thinking that way about yourself. Where it starts is in our mind with our thoughts, but our our thoughts become our words and our words really become actions and reality. So how we speak about ourselves and to ourselves and the words we use matter. They hold a lot of weight. You've heard us talk about this before on our episode called own your morning, own your day, own your life. We went into affirmations, but for example, I want to give you, I want to run through some examples. Well, first of all, I want to backtrack and say, I had a great coaching session the other day with Kayla Craft, my business coach. And I said something like I need, or I should. And she was like, Whoa, 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 hold up. That's a low vibe energy word. And we don't say that. And I was like, Oh, well, what else don't we say? I don't have it right in front of me right now, but I'm pretty sure it was like, I need, I want, I should, I would, I would, I can't, I don't. Those are all low energy words. Like we don't want to use those. I just said, don't (laughs) we stay away from those. Right. So high vibe words are where we want to lean. So just think through in your vocabulary and catch yourself. It's so funny. Like I'm kind of going on a tangent right now, but I'm remembering even in college, I got my degree in speech communication from Cal State Fullerton. And I remember doing a whole class on like, it wasn't the power of words, but it was something around that. Like we talked about this stuff a lot. And also when I worked at the Ritz Carlton, like they were huge on, you never say no worries or no problem because that indicates that there could have been a worry or there could have been a problem. You know, like let's say someone asked for, I don't know, a water and you bring them a water bottle you're, and they're like, thank you. You're not like, no worries or no problem. Even though it sounds casual and nice, you don't say that. You say, absolutely, my pleasure, right? It's a switching of the words. And so in back to um, college, they were talking about like when you are ending your email, um, instead of saying like, can't wait to see you, Instead, you say, I look forward to seeing you, right? Catch yourself. How much time do you say, can't wait? Well, that implies a a negative versus Mm -hmm. saying like, I'm looking forward to it or I'm super excited for this or I'm so happy and grateful that this is coming up. So it's like a simple switching of your words. And I catch, now that I'm so hyper aware of it, I catch myself sometimes, but I'm very hyper aware of other people doing it all the time. People are always like, I can't wait to see you or I can't wait to hang out. Yeah. And it's like, I want to be like, yo, the power of words. We catch each other all the time. (laughs) Sandy says that, oh, you can't wait or you're so excited for like now. And it's a conditioning, right? When you start to become conscious of it, you start to condition yourself and you catch yourself. Like literally now, if I say I can't wait, I, I literally stop myself before I end the sentence. I say, actually, I'm so excited for the birth of our, our baby or the Iron Man or whatever it is, because can't wait. It, yeah, it comes to that low vibe space. And it, what it, where it comes from is we don't want to focus on what we don't want because our brain goes to the, the thing that we're talking about, right? So whether it's something we want or we don't want, we don't want to focus on the negative or what we don't want. We want to focus on what we want. If I say right now, don't think about a pink elephant. Where'd your brain go? Are you thinking about a pink elephant? Our brain doesn't hear or decipher, I don't want. 
It j- it just hears the end. It hears the you know the subject, the so pink you're elephant. Making affirmations and it's like I am debt free. Actually, all your brain hears is debt, so you're actually attracting more debt. So the same way you can get the same message across in a more positive way is I am financially free. I'm a money magnet. I love money and money loves me. I have an abundance of wealth that takes care of all of my bills and beyond. You're literally switching it on its head. You're switching it into a positive. So we're releasing focus on what we don't want. I don't want this. I don't want that. Someone asks you, where do you want to go to dinner? I don't want this. I don't want... We're releasing all that focus because that's where our energy is going, right? Our energy is going to what we don't want when we think it, say it, speak it. Instead, we're just focusing on what we want. We are ready, willing, and able to receive what we want. We start focusing on the I am. We've, we've said this before on this show. I am are the two most powerful words in the English language, in, in language itself, because what comes after that is what is true, is what is true in your life. And what you realize in anything leveling up in your life, you always have to become the person first that receives that, that deserves that. You become the person And then the subject, the thing that you are working towards will come to you. But you've got to be that person, operate in that frequency, in that vibration. And it starts with your thoughts and it starts with your words. And so focusing towards what you do want only on what you want, not on what you don't want is is really key in what we found in our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love this topic. I would love to, if you want to pull up that sheet, we were reminded of this again this week. We're actually in a hypnobirthing course right now, which we should have a whole separate topic on this because it's so fascinating. But in our hypnobirthing class, it's essentially a course that is teaching us some methods and tools. Um, so we go into birth with a really strong mindset. And she had this whole slide on the power of words and how medical words that are used to describe pregnancy and labor and birth often often have a negative connotation to birthing families. And so to embrace the concept of a gentle, normal birth, hypnobirthing advises thinking and speaking in a kinder, softer words substitute, right? So just some examples, like instead of you try these, right? So instead of contraction, because what does the word contraction make you think of? Like tensing and tightening and contracting and retreating. Yes. Fear. Right? Yeah. Like, oh my God, contractions. She says, instead of contractions, say surge or wave. Doesn't that feel so much more peaceful? Yeah, like, oh, I'm having a surge right now. Yeah. I love the next one. Yes. That was the big biggest one, one for me. That was like a, a like mind opening one. Pain? Yeah. Okay. So instead of pain, because you hear people describe birth, oh my God, I was in so much pain. It was horrendous. It was so terrible. It was full of fear. And it was the most painful thing I've ever been through. Okay. Instead of pain... You say sensation, sensation. When I realized that I was like, whoa, instead of painful, it's sensational because our words matter, right? There's going, there is a very physical aspect of birth. There's a very mental aspect of birth. I will never give birth, but in just seeing and knowing and, and starting to go through this stuff, what if the birthing mother, the birthing family, everyone around it started speaking to and speaking life over how it's sensational and you're feeling sensations like it you know our brain goes to is it sensation or is it pain what we label it our brain is going to make sure that comes true so it's oh my gosh this is so painful shoot that's probably going to happen if it's i'm going through a surge this is sensational here we go like that's such a better more empowering way to describe it right another one she talked about was delivery She's like, okay, you're not Domino's delivering a pizza. Like we were, you know, you hear in hospitals and just it's accepted like a social norm, like talking about your delivery, like call it your birthing, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, even the word labor, like delivery and labor both come across as like kind of negative to me because labor, like if someone has a labor intensive job, that seems tiring. That seems exhausting. That seems like a lot of work right? I don't want to labor. I don't want to deliver. I want to birth. I want to like bring new life. Yeah. Like it's maybe instead of labor, we think of like, oh, it's the process. This, yeah. is, this is the process of bringing life into the world. It's not necessarily labor. But yeah. When I think of labor, I think of hard work, me with a lawnmower, like sweating and laboring. I also love the, instead of like complications, oh, there was complications here or there. Or what if there's complications? What if we labeled it special circumstances that, you know, Oh yeah, I have special circumstances. Like our words are so powerful. And when I 
when I think about this, you know, all I can think of the closest I'll ever get, and it's not even close probably to giving birth is, is this Iron Man, but this hypno birthing has helped me think about it because, you know, you originally think, okay, it's going to be 12 to 15 hours of pretty much pure pain is what you might think. But shoot, what if I was like, no, this is sensation. This is my body pushing itself to do something it's never done. Well, and this and is, it's I sensational. Think of it as this is the transition from one world to the next. Like this is literally just a period of hours of my baby transitioning from life in the womb to life on earth. Mm. Like it's just a transition period. It's very temporary. And just to be like so present in that moment and be like, wow, this is just as eventful for myself as it is for the baby. And we're working on it together. Like, it's not like I'm in this alone. Like, we're doing it together. The baby's going through the sensations too. The baby's going through a massive transition as well. So anyway, that we were just inspired by this topic. And you can see it can literally be applied to anything. It can be applied to affirmations. It can be applied to your birth. It can be applied to business or finances or literally anything going on, how you end an email, how you communicate with people, even if they're strangers, right? Like how we were talking about like, Oh, no worries. Or absolutely my pleasure. Like the simple switches of words, right? Just be more mindful of how you interact and start being more mindful of how you're going to notice how often people interact in a way with those low vibe like low energy words. So to wrap it up, okay, let's say you're like, okay, this makes sense. I want to start speaking to myself and using more powerful words and using high vibration words. Let's just give some tangible tips on how to do that. Think about what you want to reinforce in your life that is good about yourself or about your current circumstances, or think about what you're working towards, what you would like to receive in your life. Focus on those things and speak life over it, whether it's affirmations. I am beautiful. I am an amazing mother. I am a business builder. I am magnetic. I am whatever all those things are. I am a millionaire. I am abundant. I am filled with prosperity. Whatever those things that you want are, focus on those things and speak life over them. Release those low vibration words. I want, I need, I should, I, I desire, whatever. I wish. I wish, I wish I could. And start focusing on who's the person who has those things and receives those things. Let me just start being that person. And it starts with in my thoughts and in my words. And that will spring myself into action towards those things. We believe in you. Only those that can see the invisible can do the impossible. So remember, you are magnetic. <laughs>